Let's have a look at what is coming through for you as a model-driven apps maker in the Wave 2 2022 release. These are all features that we expect to see between October this year and March 2023. Let's get right into it first with the concept of grids, and there's lots of things coming through here. Grids are what we're using when we're creating a view in our app, and you'll see these words grids and views used interchangeably, same concept. This is where we're doing this column setup to show all of the rows in a table, or where we're using a subgrid to show related rows to a parent table. Here's my account, here's the list of related contacts. We've already seen some things starting to shift and change in here. I noticed in the maker experience the other day, you can now add an editable grid. So this idea of being able to edit in line rather than having to click through into that record and open and change it, you can actually go in and change it inside the actual view itself. So that's there in the early days at the time of recording. What we've seen announced in the Wave 2 releases some more enhancements to this. In particular, the idea of nested grids, so you'll be able to sort of expand and collapse groups together, and aggregation. So the way this reads is that if you've got numbers in any of your columns in those rows in the grid, you'll be able to aggregate up. So you'll be able to, it's almost like having subtotals. So I think we're starting to get towards a little bit more of an Excel-like experience here, which is awesome. And I've also seen some previews around of things where we're starting to see those colors come through. If you've got option sets in your grids using choices where you've assigned colors to them and so on. So that whole world of views, I'm hoping within the next little while, that is gonna be a massive way to enhance that user experience of our model-driven apps. Next up, we have the Advanced Find capability. Now, Advanced Find has been kicking around in its legacy <laughs> version forever. We've got a toggle switch at the moment where you can enable the new modern advanced find. And if you haven't done that, certainly within this release wave, you won't even need to anymore. This is going to become the default experience. There's a lot of things in this release wave that are about this is now becoming the default experience, by the way. So you'll notice as things go along, they become preview features, they become generally available. You have to opt into them and then they go radio. You're just getting those out of the box now. So this is one of those things. Honestly, should toggle this one on. The experience of using the search and filter and, and so on in the modern advanced find experience is so much more user friendly. For years and years, I tried to train people on how to use advanced find in the legacy system. It's really only people who, who are kind of data nerds who get it and love it for your everyday user and getting that great experience out of the app. That modern advanced find experience is so much better and that will now be the default. Next up, we have Power BI Quick Reports in Power Apps. We've seen this in preview on the dynamic side for a little while, but it's coming into our Power Apps space for model-driven apps as well. You'll be able to go into any view and have a button on the toolbar there that says visualize this view with a Power BI icon and just click that and you get this Power BI report. You can change things around and choose different options and things, but it's using some intelligence there to suggest what you're most likely to need in the first place. As we look at reporting in model-driven apps, there's you know, different options in here. We've always had this ability to say export to Excel, and that's not going anywhere. Everyone, everyone loves a bit of export to Excel. We've been able to bring Power BI in and embed it in there. The out-of-the-box dashboards haven't had much change, to be honest. They're fairly basic pie charts and uh, graphs and things that are fine, but that's still quite a legacy experience. I think this experience here is kind of the direction we're going in, perhaps more than enhancements to the dashboards. I haven't seen anything yet on the roadmap there. So this visualize that view, giving you that Power BI experience without needing to build a Power BI report is going to be part of the model-driven app experience very soon. The next one here, you could miss if you're reading the release notes and you didn't know what you're looking for. The exact wording of it is C form updates to command bar, business process flow, header tabs. <laughs> what this is about is the form component control. So what we want here is the ability to edit a related record. If you've got, say, uh, a, a, a case or something like that, and you've got a linked customer there, you might want to update the customer details. And at the moment, you sort of have to click away and go through and do that. There is a form component control there already, but it's not very well known and you do have to kind of go back into the classic experience to enable it. So what we're seeing here, it looks like an overhaul of that. So be able to show a related record on, on the form or on another tab that allows you to edit that related record in line and also see the business process flow and other components. So you're effectively embedding a model-driven app form 
within a form to have two tables in the one form. Teams chats in model driven apps. I've been looking forward to this one. Again, we've had this for a little while on the dynamic side. So this is a bit of a pattern where those things land in those first party apps first, and then we get them across into the maker experience here. So concept here, if you haven't seen it, is that we can have an embedded Teams chat inside a model driven app. This allows your users to work in the flow of where they're working. So if you're working inside the model driven app and you need to collaborate with someone, then you can instigate this chat from here and have that panel down the side. And if you're not working in the model driven app, you don't even have to have the license for the model driven app. You're working in Teams. You just see that as a regular Teams chat and everybody is happy and you can collaborate across those two things. So that will be part of something you'll soon be able to enable when you're making your model driven app. If you haven't seen it already, we actually have a whole new experience for creating Dataverse tables, which is fully integrated inside this studio here. And it is so much easier to work with. It takes a little bit of realignment of your brain if you're used to the old way, but we can actually now start to edit the data in the table inside the studio experience. So you don't have to wait until you've created that model driven app in order to do it. You can work with adding columns in here and shifting things around and seeing how it looks all as part of that studio experience. And this is now common across Dataverse for Teams has had this for a while so that your use of Dataverse there is going to be across the board the same. It's also designed to be more welcoming for new users. So we're bringing more people on board and that first run experience will be a whole lot easier to get into. And part of this announcement as well is another little line in there that PowerFX will be used for calculators. And we've seen this announced a couple of times before. I'm hoping it's close. That ability to create a calculated column, you might want to go, you know, uh, budget versus spent equals remaining, those kinds of things. We can do that at the moment. It's a legacy interface and quite limited in what it can do. So those PowerFX formulas, if you've learned them in Canvas apps, then you're good. If you haven't, then there'll be an excuse here to start using those. And I'll create some content on that for sure when it comes through. There are a couple of things in the release notes you want to have a look right down the bottom of the Power Platform release notes. There's a section on Dataverse. So lots of stuff in there. If you're a model driven app maker and you're a low code person, you'll start looking through that and go, it's all about APIs and plugins and, and things that I don't need to know. But there are a couple of gems in there that I want to highlight for you. And here's the first one while we're talking about PowerFX formulas is PowerFX formulas for business rules. So business rules allow you to do things like show or hide columns, make them mandatory or not, locked or not. Again, fairly limited and a fairly legacy experience. So seeing PowerFX come through there will enable a heap of other things that we can do with those business rules without needing code that allow you to get that experience that you want with your app. I'll come back to the second thing that's in Dataverse towards the end, so stick with me. Don't forget to give this video a like if you're getting value out of it. So the next thing I want to talk to you about is working with virtual tables and stick with me. Virtual tables have been in the system for a while, but they've been a like a pro dev kind of thing. There's something that you really need to you know, know what you're doing to be able to work with them. And the concept of virtual tables is that you can view data from other systems. You don't have to build the integration. You're basically viewing the data from the other system and it's behaving as if it's in Dataverse. So big announcement here is that we're going to be able to do that with a simplified experience, a wizard style interface. So this is making it available to the low code makers among us. Think about this. You've got a table in Excel online and you want to use that in your model driven app. Instead of having to import that data or connect to it in some way, you'll be able to use this virtual table concept with a wizard style interface to make it behave as if it's in there. Same with Azure SQL. Uh, this is going to be amazing. So you won't have to move that data around or you'll be able to create a model driven app that can connect to and use those other data sources. And this is where we come back to that second thing that's in the Dataverse section of the release notes, which is similar concept using virtual tables. You'll be able to share a table across Dataverse environments. So some organizations and they've got multiple environments and they're creating model driven apps with different permissions and different business units and so on. But the customer table, for instance, or the accounts table is actually the same data across the whole organization, but the apps are built in different environments. So at the moment, you really have to be moving that across every time. No longer you'll be able to share a table across multiple Dataverse environments and therefore different model driven apps in different environments going forward, which would be great. And I also want to make sure that I talk to you about what's going on with custom pages. Custom pages are the ability to bring into your model driven app the Canvas app kind of experience. So you can connect to other data sources using those like hundreds of connectors, pixel perfect design, whatever you want on the screen. 
I've had a first go at it, you can check out my video here. There's a fair bit of work in putting together and understanding how to use responsive components, which if you're not a Canvas app maker is a fairly steep learning curve. We are going to get templates in here, which is fabulous. And it will be fully responsive out of the box without having to build all that. So we get this already with model driven apps. You go create model driven app. The whole thing is fully responsive. The canvas pages now will also be fully responsive without having to do all that work. And I do love a good template as a place to get started. If you'd like to know more about what's coming in Power Platform more generally across this release wave, check out my top 10 video here. And if you are someone who configures Dynamics 365, check out my video on the roadmap and direction for Dynamics 365 as well. Thanks for watching.